What is the tool that will make you a better camp director this year? Hello, Camp Mavericks, and welcome to the Camp Hacker Podcast brought to you by Ultra Camp and Camptivities. My name is Travis Allison. I am a summer camp marketing and strategy consultant. Hey, everyone. My name is Gabrielle Rail, and I'm one of the camp directors of Camp Waro. Camp Waro is an all-girls camp in the Laurentian Mountains, and we uh, focus on creating a positive environment for gender minorities. Hi, everyone. My name is Chris Hudson. I am the founder and camp director of Camp Highlight, a sleepaway camp for kids with LGBTQ parents and routinely voted the best camp in the world. And my name is Joe Richards, and I'm the executive director at Pierce Williams, which is a summer camp and retreat facility in southwestern Ontario. Uh, we are part of the United Church of Canada's camping network, and we're located halfway between Detroit and Toronto. Welcome, everybody, to the All Tool of the Week episode. Um, we love doing this one every every year. Chris will be joining us shortly, um, but we wanted to start with um, a specific question. I think what I'll do is I'll allow each one of you to do your two tools in that section, and then we'll go from there. So, Joe, why don't you start us off, please? What are two tools that positively affect your mental health? Uh, so the two tools I chose when when we were doing this uh, this idea for the show, I literally have three times as many items as you're going to allow us to present. And um, but for mental health, um, the first thing I thought about was YouTube Premium and YouTube Music Premium. And and it sounds like a weird thing for mental health, but imagine watching things where you never have to watch a commercial. And if you, uh, my kids, um, we we are on YouTube Music and. My kids are both Apple and Android. Um, and the the one thing they said, if you get rid of, you can get rid of all streaming services, but the one thing they would like to keep is um, is YouTube Premium. Um, and it's really something that helps me just sort of not think about all of the commercials and things that we deal with in the world. And also the comfort of having it. We actually use one of the family. When I say it, I also mean that there's a there's a family version of it, which we pay for. Um, we actually have a camp account on the family. So during the summer, people, um, when they're doing program or training or whatnot, um, they have access to, to this and, and we use it for music as well. So that's my one tool for, for mental health. The other one is um, I ultra men's running shoes. Now, if you're a woman, you can, or uh, I, I don't care, just ultra running shoes. They're a... Um, they're a trail running shoe and they're uh, made to let your toes be in a natural state. So when you look at them, their toe bed is quite wide. It looks like you're barefoot, but it's not like the old member and five fingers. Um, the reason that they've helped my mental health is because I've gotten back into, I'm starting a running practice. And so doing a, a few runs a week um, and just trying to, because I like running. And if you don't like running, then figure out what you like. But like for my mental health, being out, and just running. Um, now, running is also a strong term. Run at your own. I, I you know, I move my <laughs> 300 plus pound body through the world um, at a slightly faster pace and and track with my heart rate. So um, it is. Those are my two tools. And and you know, so YouTube Premium. I think with families like 18 bucks a month, you get six people you can put on that. And I think the the running shoes. The last time I checked on Zappos, they were um, maybe a uh, um, hundred and twenty to one hundred and fifty dollars. And you can get them in bright orange, which I did. It's key, yeah. And key and for Joe. that has essential. really helped me. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Essential, essential. <laughs> right on. Thank you, Joe. And Chris, what are two tools that positively affect your mental health? So I cheated. I know we're talking about books already. But I, there is a book that has positively affected my mental health, and I want to share it with everybody. So uh, after camp this year, I took a vacation. The vacation wasn't great. At the end of the vacation, I was just packing my stuff up from the hotel. I opened up the drawer, and it seems a previous guest had left a book in there. No, it wasn't the Bible. It was a book called um, You are here discovering the magic of the present moment by Thich Nhat Hanh, who is a Buddhist monk. And I picked it up and I was like, all right, well, I need something to read on the plane, I guess. Let me tell you something. Regardless of religion, 
just listening to him describe how easy it is to focus on your breath and seat yourself in what's going on right now, right here. It is embarrassing that we don't do that more often. And the book is written, it's so easy to read. And if you just follow along and do some of the exercises that he is suggesting, my life has been changed. I can't talk about your life, but my life has been changed. Uh, I don't know if it's just the book. It's been a really tricky year for me. I don't know if it's just the book, but I'll tell you, I am, and people have noticed, I feel less stressed. I feel more zen about things. And even though my calendar and my to-do list are probably longer and deeper than it has been in years, I look at it and I know it's all going to get done. And I ground myself in the present moment and I keep it pumping. If it worked for me, maybe it'll work for you. If you're at a crossroads in your life, even if you're not at a crossroads, check it out. You are here. So uh, that's the first thing I would recommend. The second thing I'd recommend is an app called Whoa. Uh, <laughs> it is available on both Android and iPhone. And what it is really is just trippy psychedelics that you can look at yeah, yeah. on your phone. Okay. Uh, are you familiar with this, Travis? No, but I love the sound I of it. Download it immediately. Is there sound or just visual? There's no sound. So okay. you have to put your favorite soundtrack on, mm -hmm. put it in your ears and just open up. Whoa. Um, that's, a, that's my homage to Joey Lawrence, by the way, if you know who that is, congrats. Um, and it's just, there's nothing to it. It's just, it just looks like you're going through a tunnel and all these fractals are going on, but there have been moments this year where I felt like I was really close to the edge, like emotionally, <laughs> like I, I just, I was pushed all the way to the edge and I, this has, I've opened up the app and just stare at it. And it can be really soothing. Like if you just really stare at it and just get into it, it can really calm you down. So download Whoa today. Gabs, what are your two two tools for mental health? Or two so suggestions. My, my first one is the uh, Polyvagal Card Deck. So this is like fifty eight practices for calm, uh, for creating calm and um, change within your body. And for anybody that doesn't know what. Uh, the polyvagal nerve is it's a nerve that goes from basically the top the back of your neck all the way down around your body and it can contribute if you if you relax it it can help with stress release um, but it's learning how to do that and part of that is about breathing and um and stretches and exercises but it's 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 sort of the idea of when you're trying to tell yourself to calm down and that doesn't work, you know? So what are other things that you could do? We might want to will ourselves to calm down. We might want to will ourselves to, to lower our stress, but that's uh, sometimes words is not enough and we really need to get connected to our body. So for me, um, this is just an easy and fun way to, to look at it. And I think it's also something I want to share with my staff members, put in the staff lounge. Um, and I, I find it just fun to pick up. Um, and my next one is the Snoop Dogg affirmation song. It's recently came out. It okay. is amazing mm -hmm. it is hilarious it is for children uh and anybody that needs a little affirmation there's something about snoop dogg singing an affirmation song to me um in the morning when i'm getting ready it's not every morning but sometimes i'm like i just need that and uh and it's it's just fun and hilarious and wonderful and i love that he's doing that type of work um yeah. Yeah. And it just makes me feel like everybody's contributing to 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 our kids and so uh yeah the snoop dogg affirmation song Amazing. A great yeah. one. Well, for me, um, I picked a, a couple of different things. One's really a tool. The other one's kind of an activity that I, I think is fun and, and I recommend. Uh, number one, I realized when my earbuds went on the fritz a month ago, um, my Google Pixel Buds that we've had as a uh, tool of the week before, um, one of them kind of just dim down all the way. It was kind of there, but not really there. So um, I just realized that I listen to my earbuds all of the time. Like I'm listening to some sort of coming, like it is medicine for me to be listening to books, podcasts, music when I'm working, you know, sort of lo-fi chill hop music when I'm working. And without it, I was realizing how much I missed it. And I was just scrambling around to find old headphones that would work until I got my new ones in on, on warranty. So, um, 
My recommendation, as I mentioned before, is Google Pixel Buds. I have the Series A, which I think is what you have too, Joe. Um, and um, I like them. I like having the Google Assistant everywhere I go because I can't count the number of times as a, a dog walker. I say, hey, place, what is the temperature outside while I'm putting on my <laughs> boots? Um, so, yeah, I do it all the time. So anyway, I really like those. The other one, and this is not new, but it's not something I do very often, but um, Beth and I were at a free flea market last week and I bought three like bigger than a shoe box boxes of assorted Lego. And um, I have over time just collected lots of sets and lots of assorted pieces of Lego that I you know, hope to build fun stuff with and have built a few little fun th stuff with, but it's hard to find things. So you kind of have to sort them so you can find the stuff that you need. And I just realized that the practice of sorting Lego and putting them in their proper place or coming up with systems to sort them is incredibly calming for me. And you all know, uh, listening for a long time, how bad my ADD can be at times. And this is a thing, like this is one of those focus ADD moments where I'm like, put on a good book, I will spend a day sorting Lego. Um, and it's great. And if that's something that sounds appealing to you, you don't have to invest in a ton of Lego to make that happen. There are people, there are companies that sell individual pieces of Lego, like people, that's their business is they sell, you can order specific stuff for a set or a model, and they will sell you individual pieces of Lego. They hire people to sort Lego for them. And so you could get paid to just sit at a table, um, you know, lay out a, a, a good silencer tablecloth and then spill Lego onto it and just sort it and you get paid for that. Um, Sweet. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you can, you can look the usual place where people buy bricks is called um, Rebrickable or Bricklinks. Um, and awesome. You can buy everything for a whole set. You can part out little pieces. It's such a good thing. So sorting Lego is my um, activity that I find positively affects my mental health. Um, I was going to talk about um, painting, but that was exactly my tool of the week for relaxation this time last year, um, watercolors and painting. But I have done some of that in the, the past month and really enjoyed it. Keep thinking, why do I always put this off? Why do I not do this more? So uh, I'm going to go with sort some Lego. Um, if you you know, happen to inherit someone's shop and you have assorted mixed parts and tools, then that would be the exact same activity for me. I would just lay it out on a, on a, on a, a tarp on the floor in a garage and I would just sort it and I would put all the nuts and bolts together that belong together, et cetera. But Lego for me is the one I just feel super creative and um, excited about that. Our next section is great books that you read for fun. And since I have the mic, I'm just going to continue on and I'll start us off in this section. So um, there are two books that I don't think I've mentioned before, but the first one is called The Peripheral. And the author is William Gibson, who is by far my favorite author. Um, and there's something about his writing style, which is very unique. You know you're listening to a Gibson book when you do it. There's something about it that just gives me a little buzz. Like I just feel a little buzzed when I'm listening to just his language. And I've never had that happen with another author um, where I'm just listening to the tone, the pacing, and excited by the phrasing and stuff. Like I really amazing. So The Peripheral is a great book. It's the first in a series of two. And it is also a brand new series on Amazon. Um, Chloe Grace... Chloe Grace Moretz is the lead character. It's set in, they don't really say, you know, sort of West Virginia and London in the future. And it's really interesting. The movie, the sorry, the TV show is same characters, different kind of story, but really interesting. So The Peripheral is one of those books that I really like. I like the second book in that series as well too, which has a lot of the same characters. Another one is a new one, the the third book in a trilogy that I've always loved. Um, it's called Blitz by Daniel O'Malley. And he wrote a book called The Rook, which is the first in the series, which has one of my favorite novel openings ever. Um, and I probably have talked about The Rook as a tool of the week before. Um, but this is just such a, a great book. It's not like Gibson is 
um, it's very accessible, but Gibson's literature and O'Malley's just fun. Like it's a great story. It's a premise that I love in, in your sci-fi books and I just like it. So I totally recommend Blitz, which is the newest book in the series. You don't have to have read the others, but I think it's worth reading all three of those books in that series. So that, I think what I'll do is I'm going to turn back to you, Joe. What are three books that you read for fun this year? I get three books. I thought I only got two. No, that's fine. sorry. My, <laughs> I just did three trilogies, two trilogies. So um, <laughs> I'm leading you to two books, Joe. To two books. And that's what I put into the, okay. that's what I put into the, the list. Um, my first book, and I'm rereading it. I read it every night to, to fall asleep is A Fire Up on the Deep by Vernon Vinge. And if you haven't read it, it is a science fiction space opera um, but the, the interesting thing about it is it talks about th zones of thought and the idea that the higher up you go, the more transcendent you are. And so the earth might be in the slow zone and that's why we can't travel faster than the speed of light, but in other zones you can travel because they've, they have different intelligence and you can travel at, at faster speeds. This is about, uh, the basic premise is that there is a blight upon the, the galaxy, um, and it is trying to get into the slow zone to um, to get something it needs to that could kill it. That's the basic premise. Don't worry about dog-like creatures that are in packs and talk to each other and and other things. But it is the fire upon the deep. You can listen to it. You can read it. It is great. The other book is one I found at one of my favorite bookshops in the entire world. If you're ever in Guelph, Ontario, there's a book shop called The Bookshelf. And it has been there for, uh, I lived in Guelph in, in the, the 1994, the bookshelf was there. It is still there. It's got its own cinema. It is, it is its own thing. Uh, my wife and I were there after dropping our daughter off at university. And I found a book called In Praise of Pass, Walking Through Time and Nature. And it is a, it is fascinating and makes you want to go outside and hike, even like just walk a different path or revisit somewhere um, that you that you remember. Um, so growing up at Kenesari Camp, the paths in the forest are really a um, an integral part of my camp experience as a kid. Um, Kenesari's forest is very small, maybe 10 acres, but it had wide open paths, right? Like so an end of the forest closest to the lake was by the lake, I mean, Lake Erie, a massive lake. In fact, it's a great lake. Um, and uh, it was wide open, so you could see around. But then as you got further away from the, the lake and the cliff, um, you would get, you know, tighter brambles and things. And, and just the paths, uh, In Praise of Paths is a great, great read and a great book. Um, and it'll make you want to just walk outside and, and leave your backyard. And, um, and also, if you have young kids or are planning to have kids or have grandkids, it will hope that you like my hope is that i can give somebody the experience of a path that can help them um through life right mm -hmm. and and uh be able to revisit i think about a path behind so it is in praise of paths it makes you think um and um it did make me think about our good friend who uh, uh matt hansberger matt wilfred who is uh, a um a hiker um but you don't need to be a hiker you just need to be able to walk so in praise of paths. That's a really fun one. <laughs> I was just chatting to everybody on the side. The show is always so expensive for me because I'm just making, <laughs> taking notes and opening up tabs with uh, the choices on it. Gab, what have you got that's going to cost me money? Uh, oh, well, I Your have um, I have Rest in Resistance, and this is by Tracia Hershey. She's the um, she's the individual that started the NAP ministry movement, which is basically um, a way of helping people to understand that rest is has to be, it's not just self-care, but it's an integral part of your well-being, but also an integral part of our society's well-being. And it's it's sort of a pushback between pro from like productivity at all cost, um, you know, yourself, societies, et cetera. So uh, Trisha has a really wonderful way of bringing people in and understanding um, maybe that drive that a lot of us have, um, which is not bad, but also just even what you're talking about, Joe, take, taking that walk, taking that rest, taking that time 
um, how important that is, uh, not just to ourselves, to our family, but also to our society as a whole. And it, it helps me see how we run camp. Um, so I'm really enjoying that. And then the next book is sort of, it's something that I can't, it's almost, I can't listen to it fast enough. Um, I have my, my, I have an image of my nephew, um, at two years old crying cause he was so hungry. And as he was eating, he was crying cause it was like, he couldn't get the food in his mouth quick enough. Um, he was fine. He like literally had a snack 15 minutes earlier, but he's fine. Um, but basically just like, I'm hungry. And I'm like, well, close your mouth to swallow. You'll get it. Um, that's how I feel about this book. So it's called the deepest well, um, healing long, uh, long-term effects of childhood adversities. So for like talking about fun books, why is this fun for me? Um, I find it really, really, really helpful to hear a scientific approach to um, the impact that trauma um, and adversity has on children. And the author, uh, Nadine Burke Harris, also Canadian American, also the previous Surgeon General of California, so this person has flex, um, has really, the way she describes science, biology, impact, her journey of discovering how trauma has not just a psychological impact on our children, but also a biological impact that we can see in adulthood. She brings in the geeky science and explains it in such a great way that I'm sitting down taking notes, but also understanding as she's talking. Um, so this is just something that, uh, that I'm, I'm just, I can't, I just, I'm che- like, I'm chewing it up. I love it so much. So these two books back to back are what I'm, I'm really digging right now. Amazing. Thank you. Chris, what are two books that um, have been, uh, that have been fun for you to read this year? Okay. So, okay. <laughs> this will be fun for anybody else, but this is the kind of stuff that I like to read. So everyone yeah. strap in and get into it. The first one is a book called Beyond the Gender Binary by Alok Vaid Menon. And Alok is, he. they are a uh, poet and activist and public speaker and writer. And they talk a lot about gender. And this, there's like a series of books. I don't know who is publishing them, but they're these very small tracks. And they're just, they they go to um, activists, like young activists, and they just give them like, they, it's like 60 pages, not even. And in those pages, Alok is able to break down gender in a way that is really non-confrontational, just very matter of fact. I mean, it makes sense to me. I was, I was the converted being preached to. Nevertheless, I think if there is... If you are someone who's like, I don't understand all these pronouns that we got to use now. Like if you're one of those, um, you're on a journey and let this book take you on further down the road on that journey. I promise you, you won't turn gay or queer. You're just going to get smarter. And isn't that the goal? Isn't that what we want for everybody and our children and our children's children? You always throw that in because that's a great way to sell stuff. Your children and your children's children. Anyway, check that out beyond the gender binary. The second one I'm going to recommend, it's one of my favorite books. And again, these are both nonfiction books. So, uh, oh, well, here it is. It's a book called Amusing Ourselves to Death, Public Discourse in the Age of Show Business. It was written by Neil Postman, who I read all of his books. And fun fact, he was a teacher at NYU where I went and I bumped into him once and he tried to have a normal conversation with me, but I totally fangirled out and embarrassed myself. Nevertheless, the book is wonderful. What it is about is what Postman breaks down is <clears throat> using using um, you know, the conceit of his book is, you know, when it was written many years ago, there was this idea that Orwell's 1984 was going to dictate a kind of future, like a future where there was totalitarian control. But what Postman, um, what he talks about in the book is that actually it's Huxley's Brave New World the book where um, the populace is kind of so inundated with pleasure and very like personal things that they enjoy that they don't even have room to care about anything else. Now, if that sounds if that sounds a little bit of how we're living now. Well, Postman was right. Postman breaks down and looks at the history of what um, 
he was a little before social media, but what media has done to the way that we communicate and what's more, what it's done to the public square and how we discuss important topics and what topics even get deemed as important. So those would be my two recommendations. Again, if it's not your bag, I have zero apologies. They're fantastic. Thank you, so That's amazing. All right. So our last topic then is two gifts that you would recommend for every camp director. And um, I did ask this question, sort of like professional development gifts that you'd recommend in Camp Pros. And there's some good answers there. I haven't incorporated them yet just because I haven't had time to absorb them. But um, we also want to start you off right here. And Gab, I'm going to start with you. What are two gifts that you'd recommend for every to give to every camp director? My, mine's not professional. Mine's not professional uh, gifts, but it's it's a uh, one's a weighted blanket. Yep. Um, it's just honestly, uh, I'm so I can I need weight on me, and and even if it's hot outside, I need something like on me. But we could understand. There's definitely areas in Canada that there's very very cool nights. I know across the states, there are around the world. Um, but it's just that I find it just after a stressful day, it's helpful. It's reassuring. Get somebody a weighted blanket, even if you put it at the end of your feet and just have it on your feet. I find that super comforting. So weighted blanket. Um, and I put a like little link for one that I thought was really cute. BT dubs. Um, and then the next one is ready to eat uh, chana masala. So basically there's this wonderful um, uh, company. I think it's MTR or something like that. Anyways, I'll check the link. And it's ready to eat um, like Indian food and it's delicious. It has protein. It's vegetarian for those that are, are vegetarian, also gluten-free. They have those options. Um, as camp directors, coordinators, camp professionals, our goal is to, I think, eat with the kids, eat with the staff when, when it's possible. Sometimes that's not possible. So at the end of the day, if you're, you weren't able to eat what you needed to eat, having something that's easy to go, but also tastes delicious and maybe maybe it's not from your camp cafeteria. Um, I find really just lovely. And I know that that person's thinking of me. Um, so, uh, so this is, this is my go-to and um, I have a bunch of these in my cabin and I feel real fancy when I, when I crack one out and put it in the microwave. <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you. Um, definitely putting that on my list too. Joe, two presents. Two presents. Uh, two presents. I go from uh, really expensive to really inexpensive on these two gifts. Uh, the first one is a. I have something called the Laser Pecker Two Super Laser Engraver and Laser Cutter. It is a portable laser engraver, and so if you go to Camp Is Better on Instagram, you will see um, right now um, or look back whenever you're listening to this, you will see a variety of tree cookies that have. Um, Pierce Williams very specific laser etched things on them with camper names. So if you sign up, if kids sign up with the camp by December 15th at midnight, they will get their own Pierce Williams tree ornament that we'll give that we will have to them before Christmas. And it's it has their name on it. It says, I got the gift of camp. Um, and that's all done with the laser engraver. You can also do um the way we think about it is you can pretty much do anything with it. It is the limitation with this one is that it's a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter square. Um, I do have something where I can do something that's 10 centimeters by endless length if I uh, if I use this other tool. But to put a logo on a picnic table or to engrave, I can engrave on stones. I engraved, uh, my wife and I are saying is forever in a day. I engraved it on a stone and she has it at, at work as a, as a paperweight now. And I was just doing it to see if I could do it. Um, and then realized I probably shouldn't be breathing in the silica dust that the laser is probably making. Um, um, but it is, it is worth every penny if you can do things at camp with it. Um, and it will cut out it can cut out things um, that are very thin. It's not a very powerful laser, um, but it is well worth the well worth the price as long as you utilize it. Just type in Laser Pecker Two into YouTube on your YouTube Premium, and uh, you'll get a variety of videos about how it how it works. What how, what is a very thin thing that you can cut? Like what's uh, the... anything up to a quarter of an inch? So okay. a quarter inch plywood. Uh, yeah. I. 
one of my tools probably many times in the past 12 years has been auctions and um and the auctions uh i have a bunch of leather from an auction this past summer and it will cut through leather it will also engrave on leather so it can engrave on wood leather plastic it can do round things as well mm -hmm. um it is it is fascinating it is a chinese company and thus the name laser pecker but uh get over it we're all good we're all adults, no, aren't we? How, how portable is it oh it if you're seeing a picture of it it comes with an orange uh, cone that's attached that's exactly 11 centimeters from the laser which is a distance you need to be for that laser to work you can take that and as long as you can get power to the location you can set that orange cone onto a piece of wood somewhere or hold it up against a fence and you can engrave with it and laser pecker sells a little battery pack that can power it so then you don't even need the extension cord it is fully portable um and it's one of the things my my the chair of my board asked me why it and not something not a different like one that was on a stand and i said because it's movable and a it doesn't take up a lot of space so and for laser engravers it's a good starting price yeah and we we do our own my one of the whole ways that we paid for it was that it will do all of our donor wall uh tree right. cookies yeah. and and then i never have to pay another company to make me a plastic tree tree cookie cover so Amazing. and th then on the other end so that's that's probably 1500 uh anywhere from 700 to to 1500 depending on what you add to it they have sales all the time um on the other end for nine dollars and fifty cents canadian i got two of these just the other day if you work in an office with an actual phone that has a cord on it which we do which many offices do um you need to have a phone cord detangler attached to your phone your handset until you do you have no understanding who fights with a tangled phone cord like it gets wrapped up and you have to be of a certain age but you know they're but the the phone cord detangler is just a little attachment that attaches to the handset and attaches to the phone cord and then it it rotates so that the phone cord never gets knots and whatnot and i don't know what a knotted phone cord looks like because every phone i've had since the early 2000s i put a phone cord detangler on it um, and the reason i got new ones is because the ones i bought in 2007 finally died and and i needed new ones and um and it, it's it's a, it's a it's an inexpensive thing but it makes any thing that you can give a camp director or anybody in an office that makes them not think about something is a worthwhile gift that's key yeah i agree that's really smart um and that's going to be a piece of advice that comes up in our next show i've been thinking about that very point joe so thank you for that chris what are some presents you recommend so to just piggyback off what Joe said, I always think about the things that I want to receive that make my life go quicker or make me more relaxed. <laughs> so I have two very common things that you can uh, buy. First of all, a soda stream. Listen, do you like seltzer and sparkling water? If not, get with the program. Everybody likes it now. And why buy it in the store when you can make it at home for your children and your children's children? The point is, <laughs> I love Soda Stream. <laughs> it has made being able to make soda mm. at home, like just even like, also, listen, for me, I try really hard not to have sugary drinks. And I learned a long time ago that it's not necessarily like Coca-Cola. It's not the flavor that I'm craving. It's just sort of like that kinetic energy in the mouth of the bubbles. And now I get that in zero calories. Sometimes when I get want to get really wild, I'll throw like a splash of fruit punch or fruit juice in there. And like you have an entire liter of like your own pineapple, light pineapple soda or front fruit punch soda or whatever. It is, it's allowed me to stop drinking soft drinks altogether. Uh, and maybe it would work for you too. On top of that, it's just a great thing to have, right? Why have boring water when you can have what my what my 12-year-old cousin calls angry water? <laughs> <laughs> in Europe, you ask for water. They this was, yeah, in Eastern Europe, they ask if you wanted uh still water or water with gas. Yes, agua con gas mm -hmm. is the way that they ask for it in Spain as well. Um so yeah, Soda Stream is a great option. The second thing, and this isn't as specific, but I've been thinking a lot about this, 
what's the one thing we all love to do? Let me tell you quick, because I don't know what you're going to say. It's shower. There's nothing like a long shower after an exhausting day. What I would recommend getting for a camp director, um, maybe someone like me, is go into Home Depot and get the most expensive and complicated shower head that you can. Let me tell you something, everybody within the sound of my voice. You think all showers are created equal? They 1 billion percent are not. If you drop about 60 to $70 at Home Depot and get a brand new shower head, what is going on in your bathroom, will it will be like the hottest club if you showered at the hottest clubs. The point being is that the pressure of it and just the consistency of it, some of that is controlled by a shower head. And too many of us are just stuck with the shower heads that came with our apartments or homes. And we're like, ah, I'll get to it. No, get to it today. And you know, if you know someone uh, who's a camp director, believe me, they would love this because I, I don't know about anybody else, but after an entire day at camp, a shower is something like if someone's like, Chris, would you like gold bars or a shower? I'd be like, hold up a second. <laughs> I take out my calculator. I would do the assessment. Okay. It's like that. So those are my two big, those are my two tips. And just as a follow-up, the best shower head on wire cutter right now is still a Moen and it has a giant head and it has a magnetic release part that you can have both running at the same time. So you can like Oh yeah, it's, it's water very, from every direction. Oh <laughs> yes, and you don't have to install anything beyond just a shower. I love yeah. that. And, and these them. things, I want to say, shower heads are not difficult to install. Believe me, I am not handy. I am not handy. But it's literally you unscrew one thing, then you screw something else in. It's it's like changing a light bulb. Yep, yep. Good ones. Thank you very much. So my two gifts that I'm going to recommend, one I know I've covered before, um, I am doing my best to, and not doing well at it, but I'm doing my best to move away from Amazon for stuff. And the thing I am most succeeding at is um, getting away from Audible. Um, I have been, I mean, I think the first time I had Audible as a tool of the week was 12 years ago on the show. Um, and so I have a deep passion for audiobooks, as you all know, I talk about them all the time. Um, I am moving, have moved to Libro.fm. My concern was, what about all these Audible books that I've already paid for? In my case, it's a few hundred audiobooks that have been part of my subscription. Um, and you don't have to be paying to get access to those books. Audible, Amazon, of course, can take that all away at their whim, and that's a risk I, I have to take, but I can still listen to my old books. And all the my new books, my subscription goes to Libro.fm. Um, there'll be a link in our show notes at camphacker.tv slash podcast for all of this stuff. Um, and Libro, you can pick a bookstore, a local bookstore, um, a black owned bookstore, a you know queer positive bookstore. Um, I in particular have picked a queer positive bookstore in a very conservative area um, as the one I support. I am certain that they only get pennies per book, uh, per subscription per month on this, but they appreciate it. Um, and I love that. So Libro.fm and you can get it to, um, you can get it from kephacker.tv slash podcast with all this stuff or just Libro.fm. The other thing is something that I love Lego, since I've been talking about it already, it's my second Lego thing. Um, they have a new set out, which was an, a Lego Ideas things. Lego Ideas are cassettes that people make, they put up, and then they get voted on whether they're good enough to become a real Lego set. And this one was, and it was um, Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night as a Lego painting. And it is beautiful. It's awesome. It looks so cool. Um, has a little minifig Vincent in front of this giant painting relation to the minifig. Um, that's just a really interesting looking set. And I love Lego for relaxation. I love building Lego because I'm always so interested in how they um, make things more complicated or more easy depending on the set and the age. They sometimes make things intentionally more complicated because it's for in, for adult sets. And I love that. It just makes me think every time about staff training and all these different things. So those are my two gifts. 
as we wrap up today, I just want to say thank you. Um, thank you to the three of you for um, another year of Camp Hacker. Um, definitely want to say thank you to um, Matt Wilfred, who is our our editor, our, the, who writes our show notes, who looks after all of the Go Camp Pro podcast. He's amazing. Um, all of the folks who edit all of our Go Camp Pro shows really make sure that this stuff happens. So I'm grateful to all of them. In particular, we're grateful to Matt. Uh, and we want to thank him for all that he puts into this and gives out to the industry. So thank you to the three of you. If you're looking for contact information for all these folks, again, camphacker.tv slash podcast. And thanks for the evening, friends.